Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Easy question first. For people who don't know anything about the story, what yeah. can they expect from the unlikely pilgrimage of Harold Fry? The unlikely pilgrimage of Harold Fry is about Harold Fry, a man who's led a quite sedentary life, and he receives a letter out of the blue from a woman he's never, he hasn't seen for 20 years saying that she's dying. And he decides, kind of spur of the moment, completely unlike him, that he is going to walk the length of the country from Kingsbridge, where he lives, to Berwick-upon-Tweed to try and save her life. And leaving behind his own wife, who kind of goes on her own redemptive big journey, but within the space of four walls. And um, I believe, you know, you're sort of um, mostly writing for radio in the past. Yeah. And so maybe you can talk about how the story itself kind of evolved um, fr from that kind of piece into this incredible novel. And of course, now um, for a screen mm -hmm. adaptation. Yes, I mean, it be did begin as this radio play with three actors many, many, many years ago. Um, I mean, it was sort of different in many ways, but the, you know, the truth of it was was the same. And then I'd I mean, I have always, always wanted to write a book and actually I'd been writing radio drama for a long time and I thought I've got to take time out from the thing I'm doing to do this thing that I really want to try. I don't even know I can do it, but I really want to try. So I just took out about a year and took the play because there was so much kind of emotionally still in it for me and began to sort of dig and see if I could turn it into a book. But even as I was doing it, I thought, I know there's a film, I know that there's a film here, if I'm ever lucky enough. I really know that it needs, even though imaginatively, of course, you know, you, a reader can go anywhere, but there's something about seeing on a big screen that massive landscape and that one man that really makes it so powerful. And I imagine maybe when you were first thinking of it, maybe in terms of a film, um, I don't know whether the names Penelope, Wil Penem yep. Penelope Wilton and Jim Broadbent sprung to mind, but they seem like, I mean, they're just sort of legendary British actors. It must have been a dream come true to see them um, play your characters. It was amazing. It was so moving and they're so right. I mean, it was sort of... I and mean, the moment I heard they were doing it, I felt, well, yeah, that's great. We're just on now. That's That's done. And seeing them playing the character, seeing them begin. In, just in rehearsals, I saw them both kind of asking and beginning to find them. And then actually seeing what they've done, that they both have this ability to kind of spin on a sixpence and they can, they can be, I mean, Penelope can be really sharp and then suddenly you just see the tears in her eyes and you realise how much it's cost her. Or Jim with those just amazing blue eyes kind of staring out at the landscape. They're both so right. I mean, I feel really lucky. I, I, I can't imagine how you, there could never be anyone else. Something that really struck me um, was, I think we're sort of lulled into maybe at the beginning of it being yeah. a different kind of, of story, perhaps yeah. something quite nostalgic, yeah. um, maybe even lighthearted. Yeah. Um, and of course, we go on a much more heavy duty emotional journey. Yeah. Um, but of course, there's also an uplifting element to it. Um, what, what did you want to you know, deal with, with, with this story and, and by taking people on that journey, maybe make them look at their own lives in some respects. I mean, you're absolutely right that it starts in one place and you look at it and you think, oh, I see, this is about two kind of slightly older people and they live in this kind of suburban house. And we very much, I mean, right from the beginning, even with the book, that's what I meant, that you thought you understood, you thought you got who they were. And that then as the story progresses, you just bit by bit begin to, you know, you see deeper and deeper into the people that they are. And the book is so much about how as people, we kind of pass one another by, we make assumptions about one another's lives. Um, and actually there are, when you have those moments of connection, you just step out and understand so much more about, you know, I mean, other people's lives, but also how it reflects back on yours and how you might learn from them. So those kind of became the you know central themes really, but um, they can't, it comes right from that beginning, as you said, with that just that sort of oh I think I've got the image of this. This is what it's going to be, and then by the end everything has moved on. I mean like like the sort of film, it moves through this huge landscape of emotion, as well as the land. Hmm. And and what do you hope people will take away from watching it? I mean, there's definitely something in there about how we do 
deal with grief, yeah. um, how, you know, perhaps repressing things, you know, can damage ourselves, damage our relationships with yeah. others. Um, and also by, you know, modern day society, people can feel very isolated. Yeah. You know, what can we achieve by reaching out and trying to make those connections with people? I think I think it is all about those connections. And, you know, sometimes I mean, I don't mean that we all have to go around hugging one another or, you know, kind of thinking everybody is wonderful. But it's just that, I mean, there is a line in the film um, or in the book, actually, I think. I think it's really bad to quote your own book, but I have to do it in this instance. But it's something like Maureen says, if we don't try to understand what we don't know, there really is no chance. And that what is, I think, what the film is, for me, is about, that we just have to think beyond what we can see and what we know. And that's what's so brave about what Harold does is that he is prepared to step into the unknown and to kind of accept that he has to change. And so I think at any period of life, we have a responsibility to kind of be our true selves and open to change. And also thinking of the elderly people perhaps in our lives. Yeah. Um, that, you know, not making that judgment about who they are and who, what their parts are. Exactly. And also, you know, it's never too late perhaps yeah. to go and, and visit people or address, you know, stuff that's happened in the past. Yeah, completely. And can you tell us what you, what you might be working on next? Working oh, on I'm that? always working on a million things. Um, but, I mean, there's, there's talk of a musical. I mean, short of creating a board game of Harold Fry, um, there's nothing really left for me to do. But And I have thought about it because I thought, actually, it'd be quite good if it was sort of like, you know, snakes and ladders. It could. Re but apart from that, um, I've always got a new book on the go, always. And I have one on the go now. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing no, that with us. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Cheers.